Hey everyone, um, today I'll be covering folds in Haskell. So that's just um, a quick, very quick introduction to folding in functional languages. So I'll be covering fold R, so that's fold right, fold L, which is fold left, and the corresponding fold R1 and fold L1, which don't have a carrier. And um, also their, um, in turn, their corresponding scan R1 and scan R, uh, scan L1 and scan L. So um, yeah, without any further ado, let's start. Um, so we have here fold L1, and the reason why it says one is, um, so basically it, it's it's easier to demonstrate that way when you're folding the paper, if you have just the full the array. Um, but of course, I'll walk you through it. So yeah, so if you're folding, if you're folding left, that means you're starting left. So you're starting here and you have your operation here. The, the binary operation here is, um, is the divide sign. And so we start here with eight and we basically just fold it. So we get um, 0 0.666 recurring. So you can see, yeah, I mean, needless to say, um, that's also what one would get. So yeah. The only thing though is that um, so in Haskell they return the numbers in standard form. So as soon as you're going to hit uh, uh, two decimal places, they're going to start using standard form. So um, yeah, two decimal points. Anyway, so if we then go and input this again, so uh, what we have here divided by uh, this number here. So you do that in the same way that this is ants. Also you you have the uh, fold accumulating the result. So we have that divided by 24. So that gives us this number over here. So if we fold it again, we have this number. So again, uh, it's in standard form. Uh, don't be excited by the E. Uh, it's just, it's just saying, um, yeah, just, so it's uh, times 10 to the power of minus two. And then once again, divide by four, and that's the end of our folds. So that's a, a fold L1, um, with division and this is a result. Now, if we were, if we were to want to display the results, um, so like, like an actual full on array that has the results. So we'd have, we would have here actually, um, this being returned in, in the reverse order. So we would have, um, well, we'd have eight and then we'd have the result after that. So then that's that's how it, that's really useful to be able to scan um, if you want to diagnose where something went wrong in your fold. So, and then if I were to remove a one, as often fold R and fold L are introduced in, on a pure form, then we'd have a carrier. So that means we would be carrying eight. So eight would be the the carrier, and and it would be done on this array. And this would this list. So it would it would basically just um, return the same result. But in so basically, it just depends on what you would what you like, what suits your implementation, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve. So if you're trying to implement max of a list or so maximum of a list, um, you definitely don't want to be using carriers because <clears throat> there's never going to be a number which always satisfies your question, which is uh, what's a maximum number. So yeah, so that's why I should use fold L1 or fold R1 in this case. And actually, I think the time complexity varies sometimes between those two, uh, depending on the problem. Now, now let's move on to fold R. Um, right, so if we have fold R, that means we're going to be starting from right to left. So we're going to start here. And again, this is equivalent to saying fold R without the one and then putting putting four because that's our carrier from the right. So, so then we would be doing, so we fold it. So we basically, remember you're doing it from, the calculation is still this number divided by this one. If you were interested in actually doing the opposite, you would be, you would be using something called flip. So that's one of the inbuilt functions. Um, so yeah, you'd be doing that and then you'd get uh, six point zero because remember when you're dividing you're gonna end up um, it's gonna end up turning it into a decimal so then the further you'd have twelve divided by this number here so twelve divided by six so you get two 
and then a divided by 2, 4. So that's what you would get if you were to do um, fold r1 on this array or fold r4 on, on an array without this last um, element. So um, what have we learned today? We learned that fold r1 is basically just fold r, but it just operates on the last element of a list as if it were a carrier. Um, and that comes useful in certain applications. And we know that it's, a, it's very similar for fold L. So um, yeah, and we've learned that there's a nice intuition to those things. And also we've learned that they're definitely not the same. They don't produce the same results. Do not assume they're gonna give the same result because it's just not, I mean, you, you just saw like it's a completely different operation. So um, I'll give you an example of something on top of my head. I can't really think of many examples where uh, a problem would only be solvable using fold r, but um, or fold l for this. So let's say you're trying to see like um, for for a sequence of a function. Um, so at, at what point does it uh, at at what point does it start converging? So let's say from a de de definition of um, convergence of a sequence uh, to a certain limit in in mathematical analysis. And maybe you wanna you want to have a fold L function with an accumulator which increases by one each time so that you can find okay at what point do I have a sufficiently large n to satisfy the equation um, yeah so at this point you wouldn't want it wouldn't make any sense to use fold R on so many values of x which potentially not even a finite uh, list but you just you want to start from zero right that's the most logical thing. Uh, but that's just one example. There are many, many examples of applications of this and examples of times when the time complexity varies and uh, even when, when one of the two folds isn't actually... So one, you could say one of the four folds uh, is not actually applicable to solve a problem. Uh, so yeah, that's, that was a not so short introduction to one of the most basic constructs in Haskell. Uh, and I hope, I hope that this video, video helped you and yeah. Uh, please like this video and show it with your friends uh, if you have any if you're doing a CS degree joking uh, yeah no offense to CS people we are we're great yeah so um yeah um see you next time